Hey everyone, today I'm going to be doing a review of The Girl and the Grove by Eric Smith. I received this as an e-arc from NetGalley in exchange for Honest Review. This book is going to be released on May 8th. This is about a girl named Layla who's been bouncing around the foster care system since she was very, very young. She also has seasonal affective disorder, but recently she's been adopted and she's hoping that everything in her life will improve from then on. Layla has always heard voices in her head and those voices are starting to get stronger and stronger and they're calling out to her from a grove in a local park. I'm gonna start off with the things that I liked and then I'll move on to the things I didn't like about this book. First thing I liked is the dedication. I'm gonna read out loud part of the dedication and I know normally you aren't supposed to pull quotes from ARCs because they might change by the time the finished copy is out. So hopefully the dedication is the same in the finished copies, but this dedication meant a lot to me. So I want people to hear it. And it is for every kid who's been asked, where are you from? And had a tough time answering. People of color talk quite a lot about how we get asked the question, where are you from? Or what are you? Quite a lot. I've talked about it myself. I'll actually link the video where I talked about it. That can be a very personal and sometimes invasive question, but yep. Here we are still getting asked that all the time. I really appreciate this dedication because people ask me, where are you? What are you? And to really answer it, I have to go like really far into my history, personal history that random strangers don't need to know because all of it has to do with adoption. So I just appreciated this because it recognizes not only that people of color can ask that question, but for some people that is a question that we don't have an answer to. I'm adopted by my dad, my mom's adopted, so my family history is not well known. I don't really know where I'm really from, where did my ancestors really come from, like I don't have answers to that question. My favorite part of this book was definitely the family dynamics between Layla and her two adoptive parents, John and Liz. It's very obvious that this is an own voices book for the adoption representation. It just like hits spot on to so many things. It's not gonna hit spot on for everybody. And for me, my situation is very different than Layla's, but there were so many smaller things in here that I could really recognize my own experiences. Things like calling your biological parents real parents as if your adoptive parents are not real. I know personally, if anybody ever tried to call my biological father my real father, I'd probably like flip a table because that would make me so angry. Things like calling your adoptive parents mom and dad for the first time. I personally don't have any memory of calling my dad dad for the first time, but he's talked about how it was a process when I was younger from calling him Tony to Tony daddy to just daddy. I was like four or five when this process happened. So it's a big thing for people. And one other thing I really liked about the adoption representation was a very small thing and this ties in to not knowing your family history. At one point Layla's best friend Sarika makes a joke about Layla putting out an ad trying to find her biological parents and how they would have to be described as ambiguously brown which is pretty much how I would describe my own skin color which is ambiguously light brown. Because like how else do you describe a brown when you have no family history to go by and you're just like yep that's that's a color of something. I very much appreciate it being ambiguously brown as opposed to some random food description as like caramel colored skin or mocha or coffee with a little bit of cream. It works so much better. You still know the character is a person of color and it just works so well for somebody who doesn't know where their heritage is from. One more small thing about the adoption representation that made me really, really happy is there is a line where Layla realizes that people could actually confuse Liz to be her biological mother and she just feels warmth inside realizing that people could think they were actually biologically related. And oh my God, I've had so many of those moments, me and my dad get told we look a lot, we look a lot alike quite often and we usually laugh because it's just kind of funny. People are like, oh wow, you guys look a lot alike, not realizing that we're not actually biologically related, that he's not my bio dad and it's funny. And then one time my friend told me that I looked like my grandmother and we're also not biologically related. And it just, I don't know, it was one of the nicest compliments I'd ever gotten from anybody. And I don't think she meant it as a compliment. She simply meant it as like a fact. Hey, you guys look a lot alike, but it just, warmed my heart to have somebody think me and my grandmother looked alike. This book made me incredibly emotional. I almost cried several times throughout it, especially in the first chapter. The first chapter alone almost had me in absolute tears. I had to set this book down many times and just sit there and breathe because I was just so happy for Layla and for her family and especially the relationship between her and her father, John. Oh my God, John is amazing. He is literally a walking, talking dad joke and he's just so great. Liz, her mother was also pretty great. I felt like we didn't get as much of her as we did from John, but they were both amazing. And I just loved seeing all three of them together and interacting. It just made me so happy. I really liked the relationship between Layla and her best friend Sarika. They both grew up together in a group home and Sarika herself has just been adopted quite recently. I think about a year before Layla was. 
and their friendship is just so amazing. They're there for each other throughout everything, including with uh, Layla's seasonal affective disorder and her hearing voices. Sarika is pretty much the only one throughout most of the novel who knows that Layla hears voices and she's just always there to help her, to help her get through any of those episodes, even when Layla realizes those voices aren't actually her going crazy or anything. They're actual voices in her head from this mysterious grove in the park. And first, Sarika's a little, you know, nervous because her friend is now saying these voices are real, but like she's just there for her through everything. And it's so amazing. Also with Layla's seasonal affective disorder, we see her reuse a light box. She uses it like every day in the morning. It's great, it's completely normalized. And she also uses an anxiety technique that I use for myself. It's very similar at least where you kind of just start listing off things that you see around you or like you can feel or hear or touch or anything kind of like that when you're having a really bad anxiety episode. So I always love seeing that little trick in books. I've seen it in a few other books, but I can't remember any of those off the top of my head now. I'm going to move on to things I didn't like as much. In the first chapter, there was a comment by Layla that I kind of took as being transphobic. She makes a comment about how anything that gives life is automatically a woman who should be using she, her pronouns. And in this case, she's talking about a tree, but you can obviously apply that to humans and not everybody who has the ability to give birth is a woman. Men have uteruses, non-binary people have uteruses like a whole host of people have uteruses and have the ability to give birth that are not women and they don't all go by she here pronouns. So I definitely think that could have been taken out of the book. The villain of this book is one of the most stereotypical cliche mean girls I've ever seen. She's rich and has a dad that doesn't pay enough attention to her and that's why she acts out and she's blonde and she likes makeup and I just feel like at this point we can move on from that being the villain of books is the mean girls who like makeup really i'd love to see that one go away i will say though there are discussions around makeup throughout this book because layla has a birthmark that is really pale on part of her face and so there's discussions around that and how wearing makeup to please other people to cover up her birthmark is not a great thing but like you can wear makeup for yourself you just shouldn't do it to please other people and to try to fit into what society deems is beautiful. I like those discussions, but it's just the whole linking makeup to mean girl that I don't like. I wasn't a huge fan of the romance. There are kind of two love interests throughout the book. It's definitely not a love triangle. Don't believe that. But one is, well, I think both of them are kind of jerks. They're shown to be jerks. One is not really forgiven for it. I mean, he makes amends throughout the book. And so that's pretty great. But like I liked how he was held accountable for the things he was saying, the way he was acting. He had a really lot of gross moments and the way he was asking questions to Layla and how he would tell her she's so cute when she's angry. I just hate that. But the other guy was also kind of a jerk at moments and you know that from like the start and this is kind of forgiven because he has a hard life at home and like yes I understand that he hasn't had the best life at times and he's struggling as well but I feel like he's, and like he apologizes for the way he acts. But it's still like one guy is held accountable for its actions and the other guy wasn't. Lastly, I just feel like the plot wasn't well developed and the world wasn't set up that well. Things seem to move forward very quickly. I read this book very quickly and it's hard to tell how long this book is because I read it as an ER. I could look up the number of pages. But just reading it, I felt like it was very short. At one point I got, I was like 41% of the way through the book and I felt like nothing had happened. Okay, so Goodreads says the paperback is gonna be 320 pages. I don't feel like it was that long at all. I would think this book would be about 200 pages with how quickly I read it and how little stuff happened. Things just moved along very quickly, especially the end with uh, the resolution of the conflict, like happened within like the last, I don't know, 5% of the book or something. It was very quick. Also, there was a couple like plot twists in here that didn't really feel that twisty because I could see them coming from a mile away, but the characters for some reason didn't see them at all. Or just like there was these hints given about things that were going wrong and why they were going wrong and it just, it took other people pointing out that, hey, maybe you should pay attention to that poison for them to be like, hey, poison, bad. Wonder why there was poison. I just really feel like this book could have been longer to expand the plot and the conflict and to expand the world. It's set in our world with some magic. But I just feel like that all could have been expanded and would have been a lot stronger of a book. Overall, I ended up giving this book three stars. I think it is a really good book if you're looking for adoption rep and for seasonal affective disorder rep. It's just not always the best with the plot, but it's fun and it's quick. Let me know if you've read this book and what you thought about it, and I will see you all next time. Bye.